Today we'll drive this all new Mazda SUV. This is the Mazda CX-60. Will be the Mazda CX-70 in the US. Even a little wider version of that one then. Thomas and Autogefühl. And we'll take a look here at that strong front already. All new platform, rear wheel driven or all wheel drive. Headlamps, LED standard, optional matrix LED. And the very interesting, this is a part of the data mining light. And then also here, carried on further very unique position and this will be replaced by the turning indicators we're soon going to show you that strong front grille horizontal focus here also then with this sporty kind of honeycomb style this is a top trim homura the sensors are hidden behind that two-dimensional master logo then that's the reason why it's two dimension and a striking red master red color here this is always really cool they have a lot of interesting colors always and already at the side we can see 20 inch wheels 18 or 20 inch wheels and these 20 inch wheels are really massive how will they affect the driving or should you uh, go with the 18 inch wheels we'll find out in the driving part very soon 4 meter 75 or 187 inches is the length here of the cx60 this is only about like 17 centimeters or 7 inches longer than the cx5 it will make a difference also wheelbase wise we'll see how it turns out on the interior here with contrasting mirror caps pf logo People sometimes also say Fef, but I really say PF. PF sounds better than Fef, doesn't it? Like Fef, Hef, Pef, Hef, Lef. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I say PF. <laughs> Tell me in the comments. Well, I mean, design wise, you see also the side profile, round structure, not like really curved in, rather calm design. It looks really nice. Not, you know, too much screaming out, but a very sportly roof line here also, then with the black frames around that. So design wise, once again, I think they really nailed it. Or what do you think? Interesting, by the way, that the rear axle has some kind of let's say passive anti-tilt function just from the mechanical building not active with, with hydraulics or something we'll see if we feel something of that in the driving part the consistent design continues here in the rear interesting that here the uh, light signature in the rear is a little bit stronger at the outside a little bit weaker than on the inside i'll soon also hop to into the interior and hit the brake pedal for you that will be interesting cx60 logo we will then cx70 in the us version and here eSky Active PF, that's the naming then for that. If you have the petrol engine, it would also be a Sky Active engine, by the way. Just a little contrast here in the lower part with this plastic cladding. And what's really interesting, it's a rear wheel driven platform. You will get rear wheel drive only drive trains or then all wheel drive. The plug-in hybrid is always all wheel drive. But when you have the plug-in hybrid also, it will not influence the rear wheel biasness of the vehicle because everything is kind of like applying the power before or, you know the transmission is gathering all the power uh, so not a separate electric rear axle or something everything counts together as the power and then everything goes to the wheels so you always have a rear wheel bias also when you have an all-wheel drive model and now i'll hop into the vehicle and hit the brake pedal and just take a look at how the brakes are being applied then the different lights how it changes and we can also show the turning indicators what <laughs> this is kind of like tesla model 3 style it's like Wait a minute, where are the turning indicators again? <laughs> However, what's more obvious is <whistles> Auto Fuel Fake Exhaust Police is here for you because this is a clear fake exhaust alert. Yeah, hmm, is that really necessary? I prefer the front turning indicators. They look really fancy. It's a very unique integration. Haven't seen anything like it. And also how they flash. They're not cascading. But they're all also not like this classic tick tock tick tock <laughs> indicator but here it's more like like a flashing then it dissolves it yeah interesting isn't it is it a worthy opponent to the bmw x3 mercedes glc audi q5 on the interior not from the key fob maybe from the door closing sound no not as well and here the the door handles that's a master problem you know that's not where they pay attention to however now design wise it's something different here somewhat soft touch at the top part then here and then a very cool and modern design here also horizontal stress and also here how we have these finishes on the door handle and also here on the top part of the window levers that's actually quite likable and then that all new interior we can see the steering wheel has still some real buttons you know not hashtag capacitive bs but really something and also with a nice feedback that's lovely two times 12.3 inch screens left and right keynote detected here it is 
There we go. <laughs> Thank you, car. Here also very interesting, these kind of like leatherette elements at the dashboard on the left side. Seating wise in the lowest trim and in the mid trim, you can get black fabric seats if you want to go animal free. In the higher trim, and that's of course a hit and miss, only animal skin and no other alternatives. In a modern car, they should also offer some more animal free choices in higher trims as well. Seating position here with the electric control, also electric lumbar support. It does feel somewhat similar to a CX-5, but then definitely higher and also wider. You have more shoulder space and it will be even more enhanced than in the CX-70 US market version. Here we also have, haven't seen it with Mazda yet, electric control of the steering wheel and the steering wheel itself and also the materials we see that looks indeed kind of premium also what we feel in the middle console and i also have enough headroom left you can see it here so overall a comfortable seating position can't complain about that yeah and about my height it's a thing um, this will be big news now for years i have lied to you because in my passport it always said one meter 86 or six foot one but then actually we really measured and I'm not sure, maybe it's the diet, maybe it's sports. I have no idea how could I grow even further. I'm actually more 1 meters 88 or 89 and that is closer than to 6 foot 2. I didn't know myself. Yeah, but now you know and in the next videos it will be rather than always I say 1 meters. Actually it's 1 meters 88.5 and 6 foot 2. But let's just say 1 meters 89, that sounds a little bit cooler, right? 1 meters 89, 6 foot 2, yeah. Super interesting interior. Look at that. Here we have this leatherette cover. It's soft. Also, the top dashboard is soft. The steering wheel is a steering wheel of a sports car and a bigger SUV. That's lovely. And this is all the way in now, in and out. And then you can see from your perspective now, when I put it out, this is a very long way I can put it towards me. I love that because I like to be, you know, driving more away from that, you know, pillar here. Uh, and then put it all the way out is good for tall people this is really nice you see there's a huge middle tunnel really huge and the only drawback is here i come very close and with my knee to that one so that is maybe then the drawback of that however a lot of great features for example we take a closer look here the climate unit still manual no hashtag capacitive bs love that colder and warmer right here heated steering wheel i'm gonna have to turn on the ignition completely heated steering wheel heated seats, cool seats, all with separate buttons, not overly cluttered. This is how it's supposed to be. This car offers more than infotainment, but at the same time we have functions we want to use while driving with one click. We have it right here. Why it doesn't, you know, I love that. What about you? Here in the front, 12 volt power supply. This is also inductive charging pad. Then we have an interesting structure here. Um, it's not real aluminum or something. Uh, but it looks actually quite classy. Then we have the cup holders here in the front. This is the drive selector. Here is for battery charge function while driving. Not efficient, but might be needed for emission zones. So really cool what I found here. Also um, this um, selector here for the infotainment system. You can control it while driving. Soon more to the infotainment system. Real volume control. But one thing I don't like actually, which is kind of old school here, the shifting lever, that you have to put it to the right and then back why is that you know um, this is not that handy then when you're going back want to go back to the parking mode um, here that this, this doesn't work either you have to always hold this button and then put it back so uh, yeah just like a straight solution would have been better i think and then we have a split armrest with two buttons to be opened like this also we have soft and two USB-C chargers, these are actually. Here, once again, by the way, a good impression of how large that middle console is. I mean, if the CX-70 US version will be even a little bit wider, what kind of middle console will it get? <laughs> the middle console will be probably from left to the right all over the place. But that again, you know, like for drinks and so on, is actually quite nice. And also that you, you know, don't crush uh, your passenger. But, hmm, but maybe for cuddling, that might be not too good, right? I think that's too wide. Hmm. <laughs> All digital instruments. The most interesting thing about this, this is a normal driving mode. And then when you switch the driving modes, like EV, pure EV mode, then also the layout changes. It's a nice feature. You also, this is like pure electric driving in the plug-in hybrid here. Then the off-road mode. Oh, then also the engine starts up. Then you have a more rugged look for that and also with this compass. And there's also then the sport mode and this everything goes to red racing. Here we go. 
also with the RPM focus then. So yeah, I think that's a very interesting design. Head-up display with speed, a loud speed, and when you have the GPS set, you also have some like marginal root guidance. Infotainment system, here this classic master menu, and it's really simplified, but that's good because I control it from below. It's not a touchscreen here, and that's actually a fine thing. It's too far away anyway then. Here there's a map, you can zoom in and out and easily also while driving. It's actually a quite clear display, and also you have hotkeys in the lower console, so you can easily get to the individual things here. Um, what is interesting when I go to entertainment at the moment, here's the Bose sound system included also, and it's actually a very cool sound, um, quite bass intensive, but not too much. So that's good for music lovers then. At this moment, I cannot show you Apple CarPlay or Android Auto because this is a very early built vehicle with not uh, you know having these licenses included. When you will have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, they say that then stationary, you can use it as touchscreen but not while driving. So once again, all the master systems here, never by wire touch. And when Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, then stationary touch. It is being said, we'll keep you updated with that. Rear view camera has a good resolution. And here there's also this surround view camera also to the sides. And here when I go to the front, it's also switching to the front camera. And also said that there will be a see-through camera available that should be covering this area, but it's not here in this vehicle at the moment. So the thing is, it is longer than the CX-5. However, offering these six-cylinder engines, you have a longer hood as well. That looks cool design-wise, but what will it score in the rear bench? First of all, here, almost 90 degree opening of the door. That's amazing. Good for installing child seats. Somewhat soft touch here at the top part. Softer than here for your elbows, for example. Same design than the front doors, of course. And you see in the rear, nah, it might not be too much space, but definitely good that we have this easy entry and also isofix at the outside seats each. Well, I mean, here we can have so much shoe tap, of course. And then I do fit exactly in here. That's better than in the CX-5. That is my driving position with a tall driver, but you can see it's not that you would have a lot of legroom here. That's the thing. So it is maybe more or less enough, but not really that um, convincing. Headroom here. That's actually fine. Beautiful, bright ceiling here. That's also cool. What about the middle part? There is somewhat of a middle tunnel. Mm, higher and quite stiff, that middle part. So works maybe for short ways. You can, however, adjust the angle of the rear bench a little bit like this. And then, yeah, it's like two levels and then you can fold it down like this. We have to like <laughs> move it like this. We'll show you more when we are in the trunk very soon. Then the middle armrest here in the rear, fold out. It also has somewhat adaptive rubber lips. And in the middle part here, we do have seat heating also available for the outside. Yo, <laughs> I rocked that place. That's a nice move, right? Like double seat heating activation. Here in the normal two USB-C chargers and a real power socket like this. Now to the hatch, 570 up to 1730 liters. That's 50 liters more than in the CX-5. But what does it mean? Here the length actually, 95 centimeters or 37 inches. And the width is, well, it's actually great. It's way more than a meter. So it's more like one meters 10 or 43 inches. So good dimensions here, definitely. The absolute height, let's see if I can somehow manage that. It's like, yeah, it's like here, absolute height about 75 centimeters or less, a little bit less than 30 inches. It's also an interesting cover here. You can also remove it here on this top part, then you can, but in that way, it just retracts itself like this, you know? So it's actually a clever solution. What about folding the seats? Yes, we can do it from here. Yeah, but it's only a release. Here we can also just release the middle part. That one goes. And the other part does not fall automatically. We have to help it like this and like this. And then we can also fold it flat if we help a little bit more. Well, with the seats, you have to push them a little bit forward here. Now we go. So that's the maximum setup then. And what's the absolute length here for the new CX60 to the driver's seat? Is then here 1 meter 70 or 66 inches. Yes, that's the proof that I'm one with 89 or six foot two <laughs> because otherwise I could maybe fit underneath. So it doesn't open that wide actually. What about the child safety test? Oh. 
Ooh, yeah, that did have some torque, but it did stop at some point. And then let's also see how that's the sun movement, how it closes completely. Here we go. Is it smooth? Ooh, that long hood though. <laughs> yeah, definitely spaced in for the inline six cylinders, either three liter petrol or 3.3 liter diesel. Today, we have the 2.5 liter plug-in hybrid, that one then, one, two, three, four, a uh, four cylinder in that case. 330 horsepower is the total system output, 5.8 seconds the acceleration figure. The battery, 18 kilowatt hours, gross. Not gross, but gross battery size, <laughs> you know. And you will recharge with about 7.2 kilowatt AC, that is possible. We'll drive this one here today, and of course, in later episodes, we'll also show the pure petrol engine, for example, which will also be very interesting. This one here today, an all-way drive system, as I told you already earlier. Zero to 90 kilometers an hour. Welcome to the Mazda CX-60. 330 horsepower around system output, the most powerful Mazda ever. Well, it was one to, so zero to 90, not to 100, but the 100 figure is 5.8 seconds. And we have to check how much, how many seconds we scored actually here to the zero to 90 test. But definitely powerful. And you, you heard this kind of Electric sound, definitely, right? That was really interesting. Also, new automatic transmission, not with a torque converter, but with a wet clutch, interesting technology-wise. And it is indeed, comparing to older master automatic transmissions, something completely different. It really feels like nothing else we've experienced before, automatic gearbox-wise. The gears are shifted through pretty quickly indeed you feel that and here in the sports mode you also do feel the gear shifts that's also intentionally all the gauges have turned red and we got the power from both of the drivetrains and no matter how you drive pure EV or both together it's always combined to and then sent to the wheels so it's not that they have like a separate electric rear axle or something, that's not how it works. So the all-wheel drive distribution does not change and since it's a rear-wheel driven platform, it still gets a rear-wheel bias also when it is all-wheel drive like it is here right now. Pretty interesting. As for the other driving modes, you have that sport mode I mentioned, you have the normal driving mode, then the gauges also are a little bit more subtle. You can not that well see then the RPM for example, and the sports mode is really RPM focused. Here now the car really picks its uh, on, on its own. Oh, <laughs> that Volvo had it, uh, the fuel cap open. What to do actually? And for example, when I leave the throttle, it automatically charges, recuperation, and then we're also quickly in that pure EV driving mode. And I can also induce that once more, or even stronger when I'm going to the EV mode, then when we have some battery left, and the pure electric range will be up to maximum 50 kilometers or 30 miles, realistic figure a little bit less than that that you know the official figures are usually a little bit exaggerated in these driving cycles so up to 50 kilometers or up to 30 miles the concise combined consumption is always very tricky because it depends on how much using the battery here for example just four liters or more kilometers but 22 kilowatt hours and more kilometers so that's then we use a lot of electric drivetrain then the fuel consumption is low and it will be the other way around basically and then you also have an off-road mode where then also the overdrive and the ESC capabilities are actually laid out that you have a little bit more spin, for example, that you can get along better in off-road situations. Also very interesting, definitely. Usually you would keep them in the normal mode and just let the car do its thing. If you want to drive all electric at some point, you can also hit this button here in the middle console and then you have a charge target. So now the car is actually charging the battery as we go. That might make sense for emission zones in certain cities where you're not only allowed to drive all electric. That is the, the reason it's not efficient at all, of course. Then when we deactivate it, we can also once again go to the sports mode and we can overtake this one here just before the car. Yeah, whoa. That is some boost we have here. Nice, and indeed, it is an SUV, and it's also a bigger SUV than we know from Mazda before, so bigger than the CX-5, but definitely, that 2.5-liter drivetrain is doing it very well, 
Yeah, we always have, especially for our friends in the US, the powerful drivetrain in the Mazda CX, CX-5. That's also helpful. How different is it from the Mazda CX-5? Well, in the front, especially when, you know, Cornelius and I, uh, we are tall, tall guys. And so we have a lot of space between us, shoulder-wise. Can we, like, hit, make the shoulder hit like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we really have to reach out for that. Um, but then again, the middle console is so wide that I hit the middle console with my knee while driving. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, I don't know. So good for shoulder space, but not good for knee space. But, wow, it, it drives really sporty, definitely. The suspension is laid out in a very sporty note. Here also with 20-inch wheels. If you seek more comfort, stick with the small wheels. In some bumpy areas, I felt that is maybe a little bit too bumpy. It's, yeah, it's also shaking up a little bit. That might also be a thing with the plug-in hybrid, added weight from the battery. Um, yeah, so when I compare that with the CX-5, I have to say the CX-5 felt, feels more driver included, you know? So here I feel that we're sitting higher, the car is you know, leaning a little bit more into the corners, you feel more weight, you feel that the car is bigger actually. So if you seek the more natural, sporty, fun driving experience, I would honestly stick with the CX-5. We recently had the facelift version of that and it's meanwhile a very, you know, like a well-developed vehicle. Here it's more when you seek the space and you rather want, you know, long highway, run, running straight and enjoying like the so shoulder space here, that's the thing then here. Again, the suspension is stiff and sporty, but the included driving experience, how you feel one with the vehicle, that is actually to me better with the CX-5 still. That's very interesting. What is however better here with the CX-60 is, and the same will also count for the CX-70, which we will get then in the US. So remember CX-60 for Europe, and CX-70 for US markets, which will be even a little bit wide. I mean, how wide is its shoulder area supposed to be then? <laughs> that's, uh, that's really funny, definitely. Uh, by the way, we are heading up to one of my favorites, favorite routes in all Europe, close to the Kashkais area in Portugal, close to Praia do Ginsho. We've been testing these routes with so many different vehicles, so we can also very well compare how it behaves. So this will be a lot of fun coming up very soon. Here also some city areas, which is very interesting because at the moment, pure EV mode. And this brings so much more silence because my point was, this is so, more si so much more silent than the CX-5 in just the driving and also like motorway and, st and stuff. So good noise insulation. You have a more, this. Yeah, at first I was, you know, like right indicator, but I think he had the hazard lights on. But we were both seeing like, oh, right indicator, but turning left, like, what the hell? It was the head of the hazard lights though. So here in the pure EV mode, even more silence. That's actually the fun thing about the plug-in hybrid, that you have these EV moments, or maybe you can commute all electric during the week and then have a petrol engine at the weekend. But we all know that plug-in hybrids are some say it's the best of two worlds. I honestly say it's the worst of two worlds. Added weight, you have two different concepts of drivetrains. I always more urge people to either go pure electric or stick with a petrol engine and then maybe go six cylinder because the small overly tube. That was the automatic emergency brake. Yeah, I probably wasn't thinking of hitting that truck there. So uh, I do favor uh, six cylinder engines because they're also sometimes better in the fuel economy because you can keep them at, at lower RPM, you know, and they're also more, more fun, definitely, and they're not, like, super high-tuned, like, you know, three or four-cylinder engines which have, like, a, you know, low displacement, but then super horsepower tuned just because of these EU regulations, you know. So now we're getting to our fun route, and here already in the normal mode, you yeah, know, we can turn it up in the RPMs, but I think in the sport mode, you have more of that shifting experience, definitely. You also have shifting pedals here, where you can turn down the gears. This is nothing with recuperation or something. However, let's see, when we are in EV mode, yeah, it still activates then the um, petrol engine and goes to the normal mode. That's uh, maybe thing you are in EV mode, see, oh, I need really fast acceleration. 
shift down and then you have the immediate acceleration that's the reason why they do it in in that kind of way you know so the overall driving experience is you know would i say strange i mean it, it is very unusual because it does somewhat feel like master yes but it also feels kind of new so you have both elements with this vehicle so in some elements like you know like how suspension is like having the rebound and also how it leans it into the corner but at the same time the suspension is, is stiff you know, Cornelius was thinking the same thing so it feels in a way sporty alike also here steering is very good feeling you see here like, precise input and also like this is really unifying with the driver definitely so steering wheel there's some or steering feeling that's something that Mazda is doing very well always so on the one hand feels very sports car like on the other hand it feels more like cruising SUV alike and um, I think the only thing that I would criticize with this vehicle is that is not yet maybe they still have to work on that it doesn't feel you know that complete it f like the CX-5 being developed for so many years now in that recent generation it feels like this is done you know that's the best we can do with this vehicle and here I'm not sure if I'm really happy with the setup overall maybe this will be different with the 18 inch wheels then so my tip would be forget the big sportiness part with this vehicle if you want more sportiness stick with the smaller CX-5 here you want the space and the luxury and the comfort the premium feeling then go with the smaller wheels and then you also don't expect suspension and wheel wise that sportiness and you can more concentrate on the relaxed driving and then it's probably a better uh, like a like a better matchup you know winding corners i am yeah that's right i'm really working the vehicle and then you know you have this bump in the road and the car you know hops up and gets a little bit loose out of control so yeah i really have to say i mean it's the biggest master i've driven so far usually they have a lot of smaller vehicles and they drive phenomenally have a great natural driving feeling this is something i am missing with this vehicle and we know from other bigger suvs also it is possible but from that sporty master unified feeling approach i do miss something here with the cx60 that is you know kind of to me a surprise something definitely that is missing also i'm going to have a chat with the with the engineers about that you know the manufacturers are always happy also to read your comments and just gather that feedback um, because you are ultimately also the, the, the customer and then they can also improve things for the better definitely so overall i mean it's a very good driving experience i enjoy the calmness i enjoy the, the premium approach they've brought to this vehicle but for mazda being like the japanese bmw with the uh, sporty approach i would have expected a little bit more unified feeling what yes it's, yes it's a, you think so too a big car yeah 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 it feels kind of i mean it might be also a thing of the plug-in hybrid so we will of course keep you updated here on our channel as soon as we can drive the six cylinder diesel on this especially the six cylinder petrol engine then we can also compare it if it's maybe better without that added weight from the battery the battery is 18 kilowatt hours gross 18 kilowatt hours gross not net that brings a lot of weight the top electric speed ev speed is by the way 140 kilometers an hour or 90 miles an hour the top speed overall is 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour however good that we have combined power from the drivetrain sports mode and then <laughs> yeah because here that civic is not making that hill here obviously now you also hear something of the engine both oh yeah overtaking let's go oh beautiful Whew. yeah so yeah most powerful Mazda that is true so this combined drivetrain power that is very cool but that's also a thing I don't think that the plug-in hybrid vehicle fits to Mazda because plug-in hybrids tend to feel unnatural you have this combined drivetrain sometimes it's this sometimes it's that you have some of the electric boost then the machine sets in but here I think this transition is in this case actually quite well done so when we hear yeah but do you hear and see that here it's not too bad but still you have first a little bit like an electric push and then the engine sets in 
it's natural, all PHEVs do that. But you know, with pure electric vehicles, you have that in instant torque, like bam, pew. And with a, like a six cylinder petrol engine, you have this sonorous feeling, the good sound, and the rather natural uh, power curve. And to me, the mix, that's a general thing, of the plug-in hybrids is not ideal, actually. You know, they have their advantages and there might be some good use cases for it. But I feel that this vehicle here will be the best with 18-inch wheels, cruising it, six-cylinder petrol engine for a sonorous feel, and then enjoying that experience overall. Yeah. However, as for all like the like the luxury aspects of this vehicle and how calm the drive is, especially here in the normal mode. That is very, very cool. So, super interesting driving experience here. You know, here in Auto Group, we always deliver you good and bad, both, and then you can make up your mind. This will remain a very interesting vehicle. We will keep you updated very soon with all the other different driving versions. And if you want to see a little bit more color and trim, we also have a studio episode of the CX60. And recently, the CX5 facelift this one also very interesting if you want to save a little bit more money and again want a little sportier ride.